Hey, hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at price elasticity of supply and specifically the range of values and also the applications of PES. So a simple definition, price elasticity of supply is the measure of how much the supply of a product changes when there is a change in price of the product. So we're talking about the same product here, obviously, right? So a, a change in price, what is it, how does it influence suppliers? And this is something you got to kind of flip around because we, it's some, because we spend our lives as human beings <laughs> more or less demanding things, buying things. Like things related to demand tend to make a little bit more logical sense. But now you really got to flip your brain around and think, okay, I'm a supplier. I supply... Um, flip-flops to the market, and if all of a sudden the price of a certain kind of flip-flops go up because they become super cool, uh, how quickly can I create more supply? How quickly can I respond to supply? Um, another example might be I live in Santiago, Chile, and it's like, what if the, pr and, and copper is the backbone of the Chilean economy, but what if all of a sudden the price of copper went way up? How quickly could Chile, or companies in Chile, mining companies in Chile, produce more copper? Probably not as quickly as maybe somebody who makes flip-flops. Why? Because you got to pull it out of the earth, and there's a whole process to, to extract copper from the earth and turn it into something that's sellable. Whereas a, a good, like, flip-flops or maybe something even more simple, like, you know, plastic bracelets or something become really cool, you can respond much quickly. So, so the price elasticity of the supply is the flexibility of suppliers to alter their supply based on the price of the product. That's a nice way of thinking about it. So here's the equation. Pass equals the percentage change in the quantity, quantity supplied of one particular market, one particular product, rather, over the percentage change in price. And you can abbreviate that um, formula by percentage change in, in QX over percentage change in PX. And remember, since there's a direct relationship between price and quantity supplied, PES will always be a positive number. Okay, so let's take a look at some ranges of price elasticity of supply. And very much like price elasticity of demand, if, if the, when you put the numbers into the equation and the number ends up where PES is greater than 1, then you would say that um, the supply is elastic in relationship to price. If it's less than 1, then it would be inelastic. If it equals 1, it would be considered to be unit elastic. And then there are two... Two specific cases, something that's when, when price elasticity of supply is perfectly elastic, that means that PES equals infinity. And when perfectly inelastic, PES is going to equal zero. And we're going to take a look at those two special cases. Okay, but for elastic and inelastic, it's just in, it's important to know as you're a supplier, if you can re respond as quickly as possible to a particular change in price. And the more elastic your good is... Uh, you're the more likely you're going to be able to respond to a change in price. If the price goes up, you can produce more. If the price goes down, well, you can cut production. Okay. If it's inelastic or less than one, then the opposite would be true. So let's take a the, look at the two perfect, the two uh, special cases when when price elasticity of supply is perfectly elastic. That's when pass equals infinity, and that that means that a product has. The definition of a perfectly elastic supply curve is when a product has perfectly elastic supply, it is completely responsive to any change in price, and therefore even the slightest change in price will result in no quantity supply to the product. And if you take a look here, you got a supply curve that's perfectly horizontal, right? Because it's elastic, it's horizontal. And one student said to me one time, hey, Mr. Card, that kind of looks like an E, right? E elastic when it's horizontal because you can get it flipped up with inelastic. Um, but that's perfectly horizontal. That means if the price changes at all, none of it will be supplied. And you might think that this doesn't happen, but actually it does. In international trade, it's often assumed that the supply of commodities, such as wheat, available to a country is infinite. Thus, the market in the country will have a world supply curve that is perfectly elastic at the current world market price. And what that means is that if you think about wheat, you know, the price, if you are a single supplier and you try to change the price of wheat, the notion here is there's so much wheat available in the international market that someone's going to be able to go and get it for the, the price that would be lower than yours. If you tried to raise it to try to make a little bit more money on wheat, somebody would, could go out and find wheat because it's almost, inf it's not infinite, but it, there's so much wheat in the international trade market that, that all suppliers must charge the same price. Okay? So it actually does exist. Perfectly elastic supply. 
Now, a perfectly inelastic supply is when PES equals zero. And a definite definition of this is when a change in the price of a product will have absolutely no effect on the quantity supplied at all, or better said, is completely non-responsive to price changes. Now, this is a supply curve, right? Perfectly vertical at this particular quantity. And it doesn't matter if you do price one, price two, price three, four, five, as many as you want. Um, and no matter what, the, the, the supplier cannot change the supply. They cannot cut supply or increase supply um, if there's a change in price. So in the short run, sometimes known as the immediate period, it is impossible for, terms to, for firms to increase their supply straight away, no matter what happens to price. So perfectly inelastic supply curve is a possibility. And I think the, the, mining, upper, the, the mining example is a pretty useful one. Uh, and I, as I said, I live here in Chile, and copper is, is what the backbone of the Chilean, com, um, the Chilean uh, economy. And if you think about it, I mean, it's, if all of a sudden the price of, let's assume that all of the mines in Chile were, were, were operating at maximum capacity, and then all of a sudden the price of copper, for whatever reason, went way up, it would take an immediate short run, in the short run or the immediate time period, it'd be pretty impossible for a company, a mining company, to all of a sudden start just extracting more copper. No, you have to invest millions, in, if not a billion dollars, into a mine. If you know that the copper's there, that's great. But it's going to take you 6, 8, 10, 12 months in order to start responding to a change in price. And, of course, by that time, the price could drop. So a perfectly inelastic supply curve is also a possibility. Now let's take a look at why we care um, I'm constantly saying to students, yeah, but so what? Why do we care? There are two main reasons why price elasticity of supply is important. First, it's, it's important to firms. And secondly, it's important to the government. Okay. Firms, why? Well, for the same reason as always. They're trying to maximize profits, right? And if a producer expects that the price of her product to change in the future, she'll want to adjust her output accordingly, right? To be more elastic to the to particular change in price. Maybe if the producer thinks that her product's going to go down, the price is going to go down, she'll want to adjust her 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 out her output to be less than that, right? So you don't end up with too much in the marketplace. And being able to adjust output in a timely manner to price changes is key to maximizing a firm's profit. And another example is like price elasticity supply. Um, you know, if you have corn and you plant all of your corn and you're waiting and you're halfway through the harvest season and it, you know, it takes nine months for corn to grow more or less, depending on where you are, or the kind of corn. And halfway through the corn season, right, four months into it, all of a sudden wheat becomes extraordinarily expensive. I mean, you would love to be able to change your production from corn to wheat because you easily could have produced wheat instead of corn. But you can't, right? You can't. And so, therefore, the firm, in this case the farmer, wouldn't really be able to maximize profits so much, right? Because they wouldn't be able to, to change the output. But if you take something a little bit more simpler, like flip-flops or a bracelet or something, then it would be, it'd be different. But price elasticity supply is important to firms. And this is really helpful to you because in the evaluation portion of your questions for paper one on, on microeconomics, you're going to need to answer this, address this particular uh, aspect of price elasticity of supply. And the second application of PES is to the government. And a government must consider PES for, his, for a good if it is considering intervening in the market for that good. And this comes down to, you know, uh, uh, putting on a price floor, maybe taxing a particular good or subsidizing a particular good. They're going to want to know how flexible are producers to a change in price. For example, if a government is considering imposing price controls, right, either ceiling or a floor, PES should be considered. And so the government is interested in price elasticity of supply. I like to think about elasticity. You know, if something is really elastic, it's really flexible. So it, for pests, are suppliers really flexible if there's a change in price? Governments know when they get involved in the marketplace, they're going to change the price of something. So what's the, what's, how's that going to affect producers? Because producers are firms, and firms, if they're big enough, have a lot of political pull, and they can really influence the outcome of elections. And so if you're a government, Assuming that you're an elected, democratically elected government, that's really important to you because the only way politicians keep their job is to get reelected. Uh, so, so, you know, the outcome of a tax or a floor or a ceiling is really important. And the way that you could know that, one of the ways you could know that, is through price elasticity of supply. 
Okay, I hope you found this video to be helpful and we'll talk to you in a bit.